Hello, I'm Wayne Visser. I'm director of CSR International, and I'm here today in Ecuador in the Mindo Cloud Forest with uh, Ana Lucia uh, Getchel, who is managing director of Septimo Paraiso, which is a an ecological lodge in the middle of this wonderful cloud forest. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, do you want to start off by just telling us uh, what makes this lodge uh, sustainable and responsible? Well, basically here in Mindo, we are in the in one of the most important areas for bird watching of the world. We have about 500 species in the valley and within the reserve about 342. With all that in mind, the idea of building a lodge here had to be sustainable because uh, there's no big rivers where we can throw things and even if there was there's a green conscience that you you shouldn't do it so when I inherited the land with my parents this was all pastures with cows and stuff and me being green coming back from England where I got greener um, it was just a concept that I I didn't agree I have two brothers who are agriculture engineers so they see cows I see trees so we don't uh, we're not in the best of terms in business wise so when we I started doing the lodge the idea was to make it sustainable sustainable in different ways first of all you know recycling was a big part of it and how do we use things was a big part of it but mainly how to extend the value of the dollar in order to save money in order to save energy in order to basically save because the whole idea of sustainability is doing a business out of conservation because if you rely on foundations if you rely on donations it's not going to work mm -hmm. this is a family run business it's my business i have two kids and it needs to be a business and so it happens it's conservation mm -hmm. so when we did it i did it being the best lodge around with all the comforts you can get. You have Wi-Fi, you have direct TV, you have great beds, but then I wasn't gonna go and buy furniture, so I recycled furniture. I collect antiques, so we used antiques. Making it the best that it can be in the middle of the cloud forest. So then you get this influence of my family, you know, it's very European with four poster beds. But you don't go and just buy things for the sake of it. You can recycle them, so we went and see old um, old um, curtains and we did it into bedspreads so the whole idea from the beginning was to complete the circle so if you were going to put a feeder okay we have hummingbird feeders and we got certified with them we showed them how to do it you have a conscience you have a process so you get the feeder you clean it with nothing to do with soaps you just clean it with hot water and maybe a drop of chlorine and then you clean it and you keep a record of how many times you clean it. You use sugar, you don't put anything in the water apart from sugar. And then you see the birds that come. Some people say that's semi-captivity and it's not the case. They come in the morning and in the afternoon they're catching, you know, flies and things because they need the protein. So we actually demonstrated that you can bring tourism in without affecting the forest. Because the only way to preserve it is to get some money in here somehow so you have to sacrifice a little not compromise just sacrifice yeah. and get and get them interesting in protecting this land yeah now I know um, uh, many of your materials are ecological and uh, biodegradable soaps and all well, so a lot of the plastics are, are biodegradable plastics mm -hmm. and so on so th there's a lot of environmental elements, um, but there's also a social element in terms of how you uh, involve or treat the, the workers and the sort of conditions you allow for them. Yes, as in any other business, it's important to consider that you can't do it alone. So at the beginning, for the first years, you know, I did everything. Let's do this, let's do that, let's do this, and plan things and do the process of it and all this. But then I got involved with Rainforest Alliance. We had some friends there and they came here and all these new wave of being green started. It got in fashion. So for the lodges like mine that, that started like that and we got audited without doing any changes, it was a surprise to them for, a, for us to get a 91 point something percent over 100 without being certified. They say, how? I said, well, it's just common sense. You know, if you start delegating, if you start giving your employees the responsibility of doing something, it, it just becomes easier to manage. Mm. So 
they found the need of getting into a process. So what they did is they made us write what was in my brain and in my manager's brain and collect all this information in a logical way. So the lodge has, can't depend on me all the time. I can literally go now and work in Quito, get the tourist in, get everybody involved in, go to the fairs without being worried that the lodge is not going to work because there's a process behind it that involves all the workers. Mm -hmm. So now if a worker leaves, that's not a problem. You get the new work and you tell them exactly what to do. Now problems with these things were severe. I hold a master's degree in multimedia, IT. Everybody thinks, why don't you do a system? Well, basically because the knowledge of the people here is very sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Except for my manager, it's sixth grade. So you have to learn to work with these things. So what do we do? We do the process manually. Everybody, if you take, if you go to recycle the organics, you have to weigh it. You can weigh it. And all these little papers come to reception and write it down. So we manage to find a system that works with the level of education that these people have. And they, at the same time, are, have become a part of it, a part of a process. We gave them importance. Every single thing they do, from processing the garbage to cleaning the bedrooms, is important for the day-to-day -day work here. And that's how it became a project, a little sustainable project where everybody's involved. Um, now, can you just give us an idea, perhaps a final question, uh, the, the sort of biodiversity that we find ourselves in here? Um, you were telling me a story earlier about someone who came to study some moths and oh, found yeah. a great biodiversity. Uh, the cloud forest only became important like 10 or 15 years ago because everything before that was either the Galapagos or the Amazon. The Amazon. And suddenly scientists started to notice that the, cloud, the importance of the cloud forest was that. We make the clouds for everybody else to have rain. And this new wave appeared of, I, I need to study this. And only, not even the 10% has been studied. Birds get on fashion, you know, bird watching is big here because we have the birds. But we also have a lot of other things. So now there's more and more people that are coming to study the birds and to study the insects and to study the snakes and the frogs and the mammals and all that. But even in their environment, it's a matter of interest. Not a lot of people are interested on the little flies in the middle of the cloud forest. So we had a scientist coming here that was something to do with the Galapagos Foundation and somewhere in Switzerland. They came, they went into the primary forest, which we have 40 hectares, and they did, they collected these little tiny moths. I don't know the name, I'm sorry. And they came back and there they were, you know, whistling around all these things and checking them up and I went upstairs and to my surprise he said I'm going to name this one Septimus Paradisus and I thought oh wow what an honor he said yeah but out of all the things we got only the 30% we know and the 70% is something we don't know so with that in mind you have to consider how much more studies are required in order to make this place sustainable because I sustain this area but there's a whole valley to be kept. There's a whole lot more studies that we need to understand how the system works. And it's early beginnings, you know, it's early beginnings. We, we get interns here working. We try to get people to do studies here and there. And we're hoping they'll get in fashion to study the cloud for us because that's how it works, unfortunately. Mm. Well, thank you for your time today and very interesting. All the best of luck. Thank you very much.